Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If God is not in it, it's not going to work anyway. And if he is in it, then it is going to work and nobody's going to stop it. And so we need to keep our eyes on God and not on people. Everybody loves that message. The battle belongs to the Lord. But I do want to mention right up front that just because the battle belongs to the Lord, that doesn't mean that you just get to sit down and do nothing <laughs> while God does absolutely everything. So you're going to learn some things as we go through this in 2 Chronicles. I've studied this a lot. I've taught on it a number of times. We're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 tonight. And we'll have it up on the screen for you, or you can look at your Bible, which I still like to see people do. Now it happened after this, verse 1, that the Moabites and the Ammonites, together with some of the Minuites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. There was all these ites in the Old Testament. I mean, everybody was an ite of some kind. And I finally figured out that we've all got our own little brand of out, ites. The poverty ites, the sickness ites. The people-ites, <laughs> the past-ites, the grouchy neighbor-ites, the bad boss-ites, the confusion-ites, the loneliness-ites, and I could just go on and on and on and on. And any time that we have an enemy coming against us, we don't always do the first thing that we should do. The first thing that we should do any time we have a problem or an enemy coming against us, the very first thing that we should always do is seek God. Too often we run to people, and I'm not saying it's wrong to go to people, but I would not go to any person for advice until you had first asked God if that was the person you were supposed to go to. <laughs> Because to be honest, there's a lot of people that you ask them what you should do, and they don't even know what they're doing. And so it would be much wiser to seek God. And maybe he doesn't want you to go to anybody. Maybe, it, maybe you've been going to people too long, and it's time now for you to learn how to hear from God yourself. Amen? Maybe every time you need a scripture, you're not supposed to call a friend and ask him where it's at. Maybe you're supposed to dig around a little bit and find it for yourself. You'd be amazed. The harder you work at something, the more you get out of it, the more you remember it. I remember... Back when I first started teaching, before we had the internet and so much information at our fingertips, let me tell you something. Studying back then was a, pro a project. I mean, you had, I'd have my Bible, and I'd have all these study Bibles, and I'd have a Vines Dictionary, and I'd have a Strong's Concordance, and I mean, it would, it would take hours and hours and hours. But, you know, I don't regret those days at all, because it actually gave me a strong foundation in the Word. And now, it is convenient to be able to just, you know, not have to go to the concordance and find the scriptures and then look them up. Now you can just put in the computer what you want and it pops up in however many versions that you want it to have. But sometimes it does you more good to do a little digging than it does just to click the mouse. Amen? And so the first thing we want to do is go to God and go to God about everything. Jehoshaphat knew that. So in 2 Chronicles 20, verses 2 and 3, he says, Then it was reported to Jehoshaphat that a great multitude had come against him from beyond the Dead Sea out of Aram, Syria. And behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, that is, in Gedi. Now, you want to pay attention to that because The place where the enemy is gathered against him, the name of this place gets changed at the end of the story. And what it means right now is not very pleasant. But sometimes your place of battle becomes your place of blessing. Come on. Sometimes the place where you have to square off with your enemy becomes the greatest place of blessing in your life. How many of you have learned more through the tough times you've gone through than any other thing 
in your life. Okay. I wonder why we can't thank God for them when we're in them. <laughs> we live life forward, but we usually understand it backward. We look back at it and understand. And so, then it says in verse 3, then Jehoshaphat was afraid. Well, see, he was just like everybody else. First time we get bad news, when an enemy comes against us, the first thing that comes up in our heart is fear. All these bad reports of what's going to happen. But look at what he did. And he said himself, he made a decision, he said himself determinedly. Everybody say he was determined. As his vital need, see I like to take this apart slowly and look at it because he knew that seeking God in this situation was not just a little option or something he could do if he wanted to. He knew that it was, his, it was vital for him to hear from God if he wanted to defeat his enemies. He set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a, proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So these people were getting serious. Now, they wanted God to speak to them. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about divine guidance and how to hear from God. I'm just going to say a couple of things tonight about that. Sometimes when you need to do something or go through something or God calls you to do something, he may just give you a gift of faith. And a gift of faith is a faith that's beyond ordinary faith and it enables you to do something or to step out into something that should just scare you silly. But to you, it seems pretty like a pretty normal thing to go do it because God's given you this faith to go do it. And I didn't realize it for many years, but God's given Dave and I a gift of faith to run this ministry. If you had any idea how much money we have to have every month, see, it sounds exciting. Joyce is on television in two-thirds of the world, and she, she's on in... 105 languages or whatever it is and you know all that stuff and you got 26 offices and everybody <laughs> and uh, but it all costs and the thing is is we have no debt the bills are all paid we've never had to borrow money never paid one cent in interest all these years that we've been in ministry and I learned how to trust God for money way, 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 way back. Way back. When I was literally trusting God, to be honest, for my underwear and my skillets and my washcloths. And so I didn't understand what was going on in my life. I didn't understand it at all. But I understand it now. And we don't have any concern Back in 2008, when there was a kind of a financial decline, the stock market went way down, a lot of people cut back their giving, and my older son, David, got a little concerned about it with the, the missions, and he said, well, aren't, aren't you concerned? Aren't you worried about this? And I said, no. And he said, why? I said, well, if God wants me to keep doing this, then he'll pay for it, and if he's done, then I guess I might as well be done because it's not going to work without him anyway. See? We can make it up. Now, I'm sure, you know, if we would have had a crash, I might have not taken it quite that good. But, but it is the truth. I mean, it's like if God's not in it, it's not going to work anyway. And if he is in it, then it is going to work, and nobody's going to stop it. And so we need to keep our eyes on God and not on people. So sometimes God will give you a gift of faith to do something and the other people around you don't understand it. And that's why they look at you like you are totally out of your mind. And just tell you, you oh, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. And you got to stick with God. Amen? Amen? Peace will come about what to do or what not to do. Sometimes a divinely arranged encounter with someone who can bride, provide what you need or open right doors for you. So you're in one of those experiences where you met just the right person and it seemed like such an odd thing that you met this person at just that time and they happened to have 
just the ability to do just what you needed. And come on, see? That's called the providence of God in our lives. And um, then sometimes God will slam a door in your face. No matter how hard you try to open it, you can't open it. You can't get any help to open it. That door is not going to open because that is not what God wants you to do. Sometimes circumstances become such that you don't have a choice. It's the only option open to you. So you do that or you do nothing. When God called me to teach years ago, I felt like he said that I was to hold out the word of God to all men. So I never, ever from the beginning felt like I had a women's ministry or that I was supposed to just teach women. However, I wasn't doing much of anything and I was offered the opportunity to teach a women's meeting once a week at our church. Well, I didn't really want to do that because I didn't think that was really what God had called me to do. And so I went to God and said, I don't really want to do that. But then I realized that I wasn't doing anything else anyway. <laughs> so if, that's the, if that was the only door that was open, then, and I mean, that was the door that I needed to walk through because I became an associate pastor there. I ended up doing most of the preaching when the pastor was gone. I taught Bible school there. And from there was where my ministry was launched. And so sometimes your circumstances will just demand, well, this is the only thing you can do, so go do that. That's all I'm going to talk about, about hearing from God tonight. If you want to hear more of that, you come back tomorrow. <laughs> okay, now, the things that we see Jehoshaphat do, they're just so interesting, how he went about getting this help from God. And so... The next thing you're going to see that he does is he, he talks to God about how great God is <laughs> and about how awesome he was <laughs> and how powerful he was and how no enemy could defeat him. He hasn't asked God for anything. He hasn't told God about his problem. <laughs> He's just right now, I don't know, maybe he was some kind of a little spiritual psychologist, but he was getting on the good side of God right now with his attitude. Second Chronicles 24 through 6. So the people of Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord, and indeed they came from all the cities of Judah. So these people didn't just, you know, go a couple of blocks to seek God. They came from everywhere to seek God, longing for him with all of their heart. I love that. Longing for him with all of their heart. I think in the society that we live in today, not everybody, of course, there's a lot of really committed, awesome, great, strong believers. But I think in many instances, some people's relationship with Jesus is just a tad too casual for me. And people don't want to sacrifice much to serve God. Everybody wants to be paid for every move that they make. And, you know, if God gives me a song and you sing it, then I better get paid a royalty or I'm going to sue you. And, you know, I mean, that kind of stuff, I, I don't like that. I mean, it's like, yes, everybody should get their due and everybody should, you know, be treated properly. And if you've written songs and that's how you make your living, I'm not saying that you shouldn't get your royalties, but it wouldn't, wouldn't it be silly of me if I heard somebody re-preach one of my messages and I went and gave them, I mean, your pastor already told me that's what he's going to do. <laughs> I mean, he said, by the time you leave tomorrow night, I'll have several new messages. <laughs> and so that, that should be a compliment to somebody, not something that you harp about. Always be willing to sacrifice in the Lord's service. Always be willing to volunteer to do things. You're blessed if you can give some of your time and service and gifts to God and not ask for anything. And long for the Lord with all your heart. Long for him. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord in front of the new courtyard, and he said, 
And I really want you to pay attention to the way he talks to God, because I, to me, that's what makes this. O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hands, and there is no one who is able to stand against you. <laughs> I mean, he's working up to it, isn't he? You know, it'd be just like if one of your kids came over and wanted something. And they rushed right in and said, Mom, can, I, can you let me have a thousand bucks? Well, chances are they might get a no. But if they come in, oh, you are the greatest mom. You, 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 are, the, you are so pretty, Mom. You just, you're, you're just awesome. Can I have a big hug? I love you, Mom. Is there anything I can do for you? And, you know, can I help you with something around the house? There's nobody like you. And... I don't know, maybe they're smart enough to go away for 30 minutes and come back and say, by the way, Mom, <laughs> could you lend me $1,000? Well, probably if I had to go get it from 20 places, I'd let them have it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I know a few people, see, they were interested in God. They weren't just interested in what God could do for them. I'm going to say that again. They were interested in God. They weren't just interested in what he could do for them. <clears throat> now, see, I think if you're really interested in God, you seek him just as hard when you don't have a problem as when you do have a problem. Here's an example of somebody who worshiped God before he presented his problem. Matthew 8, 1 through 3, when Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And a leper came up to him and bowed down before him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you're able to heal me and make me clean. But he bowed down, signifying worship and adoration, before he asked for anything. I don't think it would hurt any of us just three or four times a day to just stop whatever we're doing, wherever we're at. Just, Lord, I love you. I need you. Thank you for being with me today. I just want you to know that I know that I'm nothing without you. I love you. And then just get on up and thank God I can still get up. <laughs> hey, in the last two years, I've gotten two new hips. Oh, I'm like the bionic woman now. It's amazing what all they can give you, new parts you can get. <laughs> now, 2 Chronicles 27 through 11, he keeps it up. <laughs> I think this guy was smart. Oh, our God, did you, and I want you to notice how many times he says you and your, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people? <laughs> Israel, and gave it forever to the descendants of your friend, Abraham. <laughs> they have lived in it, and you have built, and, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if evil comes on us, or the sword of judgment, or plague, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name and your presence is in this house, and we will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear and save us. So he's already said, God, you are awesome. We belong to you. We're your people. This is your land. We're your possession. This is your sanctuary. Now he's finally about to tell God he's got a problem. <laughs> but look at everything that he's done first before he did that. I wonder how many people are in this room or watching by television that approach God in that manner when they have a problem. <laughs> or if we just go, oh God, you gotta help me with this. I'm just, I, I need help, God. I, just, I can't put up with this anymore. I can't stand that. You know, we might at least start with, thank you, God, for all your blessings in my life. But God, I got a new problem and I need your help now. <laughs> and I tell you the truth, every time I teach this, it convicts me. Because we get like that. We forget sometimes 
that praise needs to outweigh petition. <laughs> Amen? And of course, then worship, worship goes much deeper than even praise. Now behold, verse 10, now behold the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not allow Israel to invade <laughs> when they came from the land of Egypt, for they turned away from them and did not destroy them. So he's saying, they could have been destroyed way back here, and then they wouldn't be bothering us now, but let's remember that you wouldn't let them <laughs> destroy them. <laughs> Now here they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out of your possession. <laughs> Does anybody see this, what I'm saying? I mean, he had to go to psychology school. <laughs> he had to. Driving us out of your pos possession, which you have given us as an inheritance. So first Jehoshaphat speaks of how awesome God is. Then he relates the mighty acts that God has performed in the past. Then he mentions his problem as if it were a little side note. We spend most of our time talking about the problem and very little time on the rest of the stuff. Then he mentions his problem as if it were a side note. Now he gets God personally involved by reminding him that it's his possession that the enemies are trying to steal. Second Chronicles 20:12. This is a very important part of the teaching. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? Number one, for we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us. Number two, we do not know what to do. And number three, our eyes are on you. Now that's very important there because he is saying we don't have the power to defeat this enemy. We cannot do this without you. We wouldn't know what to do even if we tried, but our eyes are on you. Let's bring it down to a level in our everyday life. Have any of you ever tried to change another human being? <laughs> any of you ladies ever tried to change your husband? Now see, it took me a lot of years of suffering <laughs> before I got around <laughs> to saying, God, I have no power to change anything and I wouldn't know what to do even if I did because I've tried everything and none of it's worked. But now finally, God, I have my eyes on you. Come on, sometimes it takes us a while to finally get our eyes on God and realize that we don't have what it takes to do what needs to be done. Well, there's a great promise in the Bible that if we seek first God's kingdom above all else in His righteousness, He will give everything that we need in every area of your life. Whatever your battle you're facing, God's gonna help you fight that battle today. You know, really, you've already won. You just need to stand firm and apply the victory that Jesus has already given us when he died on the cross. I want you to live with great expectation for good things to happen in your life. Zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory prison. I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen. En Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for a third degree burglary. I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here. So they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. Are you 
That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved, you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld. En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor hun leven met Jezus gekozen. Heb je een vraag over de uitzending? Schrijf ons. Onze medewerkers beantwoorden graag jouw vragen. Contact at joyce